Okay, so my project is on interprofessional education at Sargent College. Um, so what specifically is interprofessional education? Interprofessional education is, um, is the co-education of several disciplines. So students are, who typically work in medical fields like doctors, occupational therapists, are typically educated separately of each other. Um, so like medical students go to medical schools, um, and dental students go to dental schools and stuff like that. So, however, when, I, when they start to practice, they need to communicate with each other and often work together in interprofessional teams. So interprofessional education attempts to bridge this gap by, by, create, by creating a, by co-educating these disciplines. Um, more specifically, learning about each other's terms, learning about their roles and scopes of practice. The program specifically at Sargent College has five different professions, occupational therapy, nutrition, physical therapy, athletic training, and speech language pathology. So my research question was how do perceptions about one's own profession and other professions change throughout module one of the program at Sargent? I completed 21 interviews across the five disciplines, um, more specifically, uh, more specifically analyzing a subset of nine occupational therapy students interviews. I used a grounded theory approach to complete my coding. So I, from the sentences um, with the codes, I created open codes, which were just basically a summary or small um, kind of representation of what the sentence was about. Grouping those open codes together, I made axial codes, um, which were just a summary of the codes that um, were related. And then the axial codes were grouped together to create a selective code or a theme. So there were seven selective codes or themes that I found. Um, the first one was looking at what, how do occupational therapy students view occupational therapy? So there were three, there were a couple of things that were emphasized. One thing was being client-centered. So uh, occupational therapists found that it, occupational therapy students found that OT was very client-centered. So it focused specifically on the client that they were working with on quote, as Andrea said, their daily activities and their daily occupations. The second thing that we found was uh, OT is very broad. So it could be teaching people like managing money um, or as Andrea says, how to go through a job interview. Um, and so it was broad, but also widely applicable. Um, so those were the, and also, yeah. So those were the three things, client-centered, broad, and um, widely applicable. The second thing that we found was that OT was generally viewed as being undervalued both by uh, people in the community and other healthcare providers. And this was mainly because of the broadness and widely applicableness. So because the students view, the students found that because their field was very broad, it's, as Haley says, hard for people to fully understand and give us a role within a setting. And us, um, Haley also said, it definitely showed, quote, it definitely showed when other professions tried to tell us what we do. Um, and so OT is not very well understood and because of, because it is very broad. And so because of that, it's undervalued. The third theme is that there were OT students and PT students had some tensions or weird dynamics. Um, so Grace, only with some physical therapy students. Um, so Gray stated that phys quote, physical therapists can do what an occupational therapist can do and more. And that was a physical therapist saying that to her. So she was, she found that sometimes there was confusions over the scope of practice of occupational therapy and that physical therapists um, that were telling them that they can do what an occupational therapist can do. However, they, most occupational therapy, occupational therapy students respected physical therapy as a profession and found it important. So, and this is because a lot of them had considered physical therapy before and Grace had to as well. So there was this dynamic where they respected physical therapy as a profession, but sometimes some physical therapy students didn't understand the occupational therapist scope of practice. The fourth theme is that Occupational therapy students had limited understanding of athletic training and nutrition, more specifically in different ways. So athletic training, a lot of students didn't understand 
that it was part of the interprofessional team and part of kind of the medical side of things. So um, Sarah specifically said, quote, I didn't know that it was part of the interprofessional te team. Jody as well said athletic training, quote, sorry, athletic training, here I am six months into this program and I still don't really know much about that. So most students, so a lot of students didn't understand that athletic training was a medical profession um, that was part of the interprofessional team. Regarding nutrition, most students understood some of the basic principles around nutrition, but then didn't really classify, didn't really talk about nutrition as a profession. So it talked a lot about, quote, maintaining, maintain and regulate your body, um, as well as how students can, how nutrition helps people maintain healthy diets, but it didn't really talk about nutrition as an intervention or providing care. And so in this way, nutrition was like almost a list of principles rather than a profession. Um, looking more to the occupational therapist's uh, relationship with speech language pathology, it was very collegial and friendly. Um, a lot of uh, uh, occupational therapists often work with speech language pathology speech language pathologists in the clinic. So as Haley says, quote, our healthcare profession is kind of dependent on one another. So they have a very good working relationship. Looking more to interprofessional practice um, in the value of it, students seem to recognize that interprofessional practice is important after when they start practicing after school. I mean, after the end of their degree. Um, so Andrea said just it's be quote, just because no one exists in a bubble and you're, do, you're kind of doing a disservice to your client just because not being able to work with other people, like no one profession can solve every problem for every client, end quote. So they really recognize the importance of doing interprofessional practice. Um, so yeah, and then they also realize that interprofessional practice can be affected by the medical hierarchy so if someone sees themselves as superior um, or you're debating your scope of practice, as Anne says, quote, that's just wasting everybody's time, end quote. So really students recognize that interprofessional practice is important and it can be affected by the medical hierarchy. Lastly, interprofessional education has the ability to generate collaborative, ability, collaborative abilities. Um, so there were two parts of the module, um, a couple sessions in person as well as then online. And students found that the online work, which is quite relevant to our new Zoom university, um, they found that the online work was not as helpful as the in-person. So quote, Kathy just felt like, quote, it was doing it to get it done rather than learning and having a conversation, end quote. So students found that online, they weren't able to have the same discussions that they had in class. Um, as Kathy reflected about in class, quote, and then just any in-person conversation was really helpful and unique because we were able to bounce ideas off of each other. And I was keep, uh, able to learn about more perspectives about other professions. So lastly, improvements to the future IPE efforts, um, particularly a specific presentation of the roles of athletic training and nutrition, which were underrepresented in the terms of the number of students, but also um, not as well understood. The second thing would be a targeted approach to enhancing OTPT knowledge about um, like scopes of practice and relationships to making sure that there isn't that confusion about where either the boundaries are or the overlaps are between the two professions. And lastly, more in-person IP activities to further generate collaborative abilities. Um, thank you for listening and I'm open to questions.